and welcome back to all of the map thanks for tuning in on today's episode we're going to go to news of the day for february 14th 2022 in a lot of parts of the world it's valentine's day so happy valentine's day to you we're going to do this uh game as we normally do it as a no time moving aloud challenge so if you want to do the news of the day game it's below the news of the day is a geoguesser game that presents five news articles from around the world that I feel like we could gain some uh, knowledge on actual location where these news events occur. So this is a fun one. I do enjoy this. I'll be doing this probably Monday through Fridays with the occasional weekends, depending on scenarios and situations and circumstances around my family and what they have on the weekends. Uh, but uh, we'll try to get out this to you at least during the weekdays. So the play along link, like I said, is in the description below. And we're going to get into the first news article or news event, news happening of the day. And the one news event that we have not focused on on this channel yet, which I think it's been a little while. We've done some going for gold series. But this one is the Olympics. So we're in Beijing here. We're taking a look at um, the Olympic, I guess, area in Beijing. And I think this is right across the street. I'm not sure where it is, but the National Indoor Facility. And what do we have right off the bat is ice hockey. Finland reached the quarterfinals with a comeback win over Sweden. Yeah, you probably already know this, but for the rest of you around the world uh, that aren't aware of what's going on in the hockey well, Finland mounted a stunning comeback to beat local rivals Sweden 4-3 to in overtime in a penny, penalty-ridden, riddled, <laughs> gotta learn how to speak first, Group C battle to claim top spot and a place in the quarterfinals of the men's Olympic ice hockey tournament. So, Finland, Russian Olympic Committee, and the United States won their groups to reach the quarterfinals and were joined in the last eight by Sweden as the top second placed finisher. Just just wanted to bring that out, out to you. Um, again, I know this is a big rivalry. We'll see who gets the gold, the silver, and the bronze in, in hockey, but I know uh, many of the followers of this channel uh, are definitely watching the hockey, whether you're from Sweden, whether you're from the United States or Finland, uh, as well as Russia. Uh, we will see how that goes and how that is to play out. Now that we're in the Olympics, we'll probably do an Olympics game at some point in this future, but uh, let's just take a the quick uh, look. I don't know if this is up to date. I don't know if I hit reload this page. Let's reload to see if this is updated since I've last done this. And let's see the medal race, how that uploads. Uh, doesn't look like the last medal winners. Ski jumping and... Let's see. Okay, so that was... It took a little while to upload, interestingly enough. Um, Norway in first. So Scandinavian country leads it. The gold... Yeah, they lead the golds and the medal count with 21. The Russian Olympic uh, organization at 18. The United States in third at 16. Germany uh, coming in in second place, I believe, in the gold with eight. But overall, 15 medals. Austria, Canada, Netherlands, Sweden... France and Italy round out the top 10. Let's see other countries involved. 10 through 20, we've got Japan at 11. China on 10 total medals. Switzerland, 8. Slovenia, 7. South Korea, 5. Australia, surprisingly enough, at 4. And Finland at 4 as well. 1 gold. Hungary, 3. Czech Republic, 2. Belarus rounding out the top 20 with 2. So let's just take a quick. I'm interesting to see... So Australia snowboarding with two, freestyle skiing with one, skeleton with one for Australia. That's interesting. Uh, the country down under. And it uh, looks like all of the medals for Finland came in cross-country skiing and Belarus. Let's see if we've got any other ones that uh, of note. New Zealand, Poland. Nope. So, yep, there we go. Spain. Let's see where Spain, what medal do they get that in? Snowboarding. So interestingly enough, uh, Spain getting a medal in snowboarding. Norway leading the way here. I guess it's almost a little more than halfway through the Olympics. So we'll continue this maybe in another News of the Day game. But let's find out where. Let's go back to where this is actually located. It is in Beijing. So let's take a look on the map where Beijing is, which is interesting that it is this 
I guess locate it where it's, from a weather standpoint, it's like Sochi. It doesn't get too cold. I guess it gets cold, but not as much snow as other areas. I think we're up near the Olympic uh, Forest Park with this near the National Stadium. And there it is, the Beijing National Indoor Stadium. I think we're around here on this, up from the digital Beijing parking lot in Beijing. And there we were, 5,000 points, 83 yards. The Olympics will continue on all over the map. Off to the far north, where maybe the Olympics should be played, but perhaps a little too cold. And we got an interesting looking doors cameras doors into a mountainside doors why would doors be going into a mountainside in the middle of the arctic in the middle of nowhere well let's take a look at this article and we got an arctic seed vault to receive rare deposits so this was on sunday um oslo so this article is out of oslo but we're actually looking at uh svalbard a vault built on an Arctic mountainside to pr preserve the world's crop seeds from war, disease, and other catastrophes will receive new deposits on Monday, today, including one from the first organization that made a withdrawal from the facility, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault on Spitsbergen Island, halfway between mainland Norway and the North Pole, is only open a few times a year to limit its seed bank's exposure to the outside world. On Monday, gene banks from Sudan, Uganda, New Zealand, Germany, and Lebanon will deposit seeds, including millet, sorghum, and wheat, as backups to their own collections. So this, this for me, is a funny um, seeds. I guess um, the seed collection destroyed in Syria during the Civil War has been systematically rebuilt. Shows the vault functions as an insurance for current and future food supply for the local food security. So, interesting. Svalbard hosting a critical part of the world's food potential in a catast catastrophe or some type of event that would warrant that. So, let's go back and take a look at this again. Yeah, this is this is it. This is where all the seeds are. Interesting. I, I just never knew this. Maybe you did, but I guess in a time of crisis, you want to come to Svalbard to get your seeds to replenish. So this is like a large insurance policy. So we're going to go far up to the north, to the North Pole almost. And we're going to go up to this big, massive land. I mean, it is. if you look at Svalbard, it is pretty big, I would have to say. But I think we're here near Longyearbyen, Longyearbyen, and I know it's around here, near the Svalbard Airport. I guess it's easy. There it is, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Did you know where that was? Do you know where all the seeds are in the world if something happens and people go crazy and it's the end of days? Well, you want to fly to Svalbard Airport to collect your seeds. The unfortunate thing is I don't know if you're going to grow much there. So there we are. Let's guess that. And there we are, the cool storage facility with Alpine Treks, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Interesting, interesting article for me on that. Let's go off to the third news item. And we're going not quite down under, but we're going near down under. We're going to New Zealand. And this is the parliament in Wellington. I'm going to take a look around for Wellington. Well, what the heck's happening in New Zealand today? Well, they're playing music. They're playing a lot of crazy music for the protesters so new zealand has employed an unusual tactic to disperse freedom convoy protesters on sunday playing the hit songs of barry manilo and james blunt as well as the spanish dance track macarena by the band los del rio the so-called freedom convoy rallies in several parts of the globe following a movement in canada which has seen the truckers protesting so yeah, this is uh, interesting. Um, <laughs> the protesters actually uh, played music back. The 1984 song, We're Not Gonna Take It, by American band Twister Sister. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Um, I thought of this as um, just something unique. Something, a unique news article uh, that they're going to play, the Macarena. Um, I think they should play, this is my thing, they should play Santana's Oyo Como Va, 
on repeat. I, I guarantee you after about 15 to 20 minutes of that song on repeat, people will go nuts. Again, Santana, I've never, I don't know if you know about this song, but it's Santana, Carlos Santana, and the song is called Oyo, Oye, Oye Como Va. Listen to that for more than three times and you'll drive yourself nuts. Um, so anyway. All right, so we're going to look at Wellington. We're going to find where this happened, where they're playing the music um, here at Parliament Hill, or what, did, what would this be called here in New Zealand? What do they call Parliament? Um, let me see. Theater. Where was this Parliament? Where is Parliament? Wellington. Come on, Wellington. Where are you? Um, there it is. The Beehive Parliament House. Uh, so I think we're on Bowen Street here, near Huxley's, the Thistle Inn, McDonald's, on Bunny Street. Um, there we were, 5,000.17 yards. The Beehive, if you're not aware, is the iconic executive wing of New Zealand's Parliament. And then the uh, here's the regular Parliament buildings there in the Parliament House in Wellington, New Zealand. All right, so we are on a lake in the middle of some place where? Where is this? What does this have to do with all this water? Well, this. Drought. I'm not sure if this is the same bridge as that we see here that we're on. Um, but it kind of almost looks like it. I mean, kind of, right? Sort of. So, a lot of drought has occurred in Spain and Portugal, and... What's interesting is ruins have appeared. So roofs have been peeking out of the water, have become a common sight every summer in the Lindosa Reservoir in northwestern Spain. In especially dry years, it parts would appear of the old village of Asaredo, Asaredo, submerged three decades ago, when a hydropower dam flooded the valley. Never before has the skeleton of the village emerged in its entirety in the middle of the usually wet winter season. But here, alas, it has. Uh, yeah, this is um, this is very interesting for me because um, this town existed, what was it, they said three decades ago. And reservoirs do fill a lot of these old towns in a lot of parts of the world, including the United States. But I thought this was interesting. So, uh, yeah, this is an interesting news. I would guess that this is it, maybe? The same location? Um, certainly looks like it, right? So the fact that all that water is gone is amazing for me to see. Uh, but nonetheless, it happens. So we're off to northwest Spain. I did not pay attention where this was, actually, to be honest to you, uh, with you uh, on this. To you, with you? What's going on with me today? Um, which... I did this game. When I do this, these News of the Day articles, I usually do them the first thing in the morning. I do the games either late in the morning or late afternoon. Um, so sometimes this escapes my mind. Um, so interesting. I think we're out here somewhere, right? I think. Where are we? Isn't that amazing how much, uh, how easily, I forgot, I think this is it, and, no, it's not, 200 miles away, yeah, I didn't, I didn't when I did this, Acerado, uh, I, I don't know, I don't think I even zoomed out, which is interesting, right, normally I'll zoom out, take a look at it, put it into the right into the map and forget about it but man that one's a little further away than i had thought any case there we are spain news of the day drought need some water and we head off to a place that doesn't is not get a lot of um drought isn't particularly commonplace in miami it's a lot of heavy rain and tropical type weather and why the heck are we at inter miami international de football Club International Day Football Miami, home of the Major League Soccer side Inter Miami. I believe Phil Neville is still the, the manager here. Uh, here's their ground, their football ground where they play. Um, I think Matuti plays for 
Miami here, a new side. David Beckham, owner here, north of Miami, I think actually is where this is located. And this looks like they're training. Yeah, it says Inter-Miami CF Training Center. So nice new training facility. Their ground is right across the street here, Inter-Miami. They are the black and pink of Miami, almost like Miami Vice. Why the heck is there a news article around here in Miami? Well, to be quite frank, maybe we can do sports of the day at some point. But I saw a Finnish international, Robert Taylor, signed with Inter Miami, uh, coming from Norwegian top flight club, sports club in Braun, in the 2023 MLS season with the option of 2024. So does anybody know from Finland is... This guy good or not? I just saw it pop up. I saw it as a, I would say, r rather big news article when I typed in Finland news, and this came up. So, might not be in big news for anybody in this watching this, but we'll, we'll find out where Inter Miami is. And Inter Miami is not where you think it is. You don't think it's not here in Miami. It's actually north, I believe, in Fort Lauderdale. Here it is up here, near the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. It's the DRVPNK Stadium. And I think we are right about here. That's where we were. I think the training, is this the training center? Where is the training center? I think the training center is north. Or, yeah, so I wonder what side the airport is on here. Maybe that's the, okay, looking north. Maybe the airport, maybe this is the airport over here. But that's where we are. We are in the city of Fort Lauderdale, not Miami. So I don't know how many people know that. Uh, the hope, I believe, is uh, for Inter Miami to play down in the actual city of Miami. Uh, but I think they've run into maybe in an island. Maybe they're playing in an island or the be building a stadium at here on an island. I'm not sure. Anybody know about this? Comment down below. Don't follow Inter from Miami and Major League Soccer, but thought it was an interesting news topic considering many of the folks that are playing this game and watching this game are from Finland. Um, but yeah, that's news of the day. If you have any other news suggestions, news articles that you want me to put into news of the day, uh, feel free to send me an email at allovermap23 at gmail.com. Um, and welcome to your comments and suggestions around this game. Uh, if you like this, hit the like button, smash that subscribe button, share this with your friends, want to grow this channel. 24,025 points was the score in this game. We went from Miami to Spain to Svalbard to the Olympics, Beijing, and to down next to the country down under, in New Zealand in Wellington, where they've been playing a lot of the Macarena. My suggestion, play Carlos Santana's Oyo Kamava. With that said, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, cheers.